Have you ever asked yourself, what is negotiation? What does it imply to negotiate? Or even, when is a negotiation complete? Negotiation is a strategic discussion that resolves an issue in a way that both parties find acceptable. In a negotiation, each party tries to persuade the other to agree with his or her point of view. Now, let's suppose this is you, and you're trying to negotiate about something with this person over here. As the process of negotiation goes on, both of you state your terms and conditions and try to get into an agreement. However, suppose this person doesn't want to play fair and use dirty tricks to take advantage of you. What if they use dirty tricks? I think I'm gonna have to kick their butt. I, I don't think I'd have any other choice but to do that. I'm gonna feel really bad because I laid all my trust on that person or on that company and I'm not gonna wanna do business with them anymore because I can't trust them and everything is based on trust. I love my money, so you have to be good with my money. So if I don't trust you, I will not do business with you. If you're going to deceive me in the beginning, you're going to deceive me in the end. So why would I do business with you? Interesting answers, huh? Let me give you now three steps in negotiating the rules of negotiating game where the other side seems to be using a tricky tactic. The first one is to recognize the tactic. You know, sometimes often just recognizing a tactic will neutralize it. Then, raise the issue explicitly. Simply raising a question about a tactic may be enough to get them to stop using it. The most important purpose of bringing the tactic up explicitly, however, is to give you an opportunity to negotiate about the rules of the game. If the other party is using dirty tricks, you have to negotiate the rules of the game. To negotiate about the rules of the game, you have to make sure that you Separate the people from the problem. Invent options for mutual gain. And insist on using objective criteria. So now, we'll have a few examples that will explain each of these points. Do not attack people personally for using a tactic that you consider not fair. So, as I can see, you left me with all the hard work, so you can stay with the easy stuff, right? Uh, I'm having a little trouble handling this work. I feel like it's too much for me and I can't get it done by myself. Would you mind if we redistribute the work and maybe we could get it done more efficiently? Above all, remember. Be hard on principle. Using the principle of reciprocity on them often works. Frame the principle behind each tactic as a proposed rule for the game. As a last resort, walk out. It is my impression that you are not interested in negotiating in a way that we both think will produce results. Here's my phone number. If I'm mistaken, I'm ready at any time you are. Until then, we'll pursue the court option. If you are walking on a legitimate ground, and if they are truly interested in an agreement, they are likely to call you back to the table. Let's now take a look at the most common tricky tactics people use to take advantage over others during a negotiation. We will divide it into three categories. Deliberate deception, psychological warfare, and positional pressure tactics. Deliberate deceptions consist in misrepresentation of facts, authority or intentions. Now, let's say this is Nick and he is trying to buy a car. And the seller, Mr. Solomon, is presenting funny facts about the car. This car is almost new. This car was driven only 5,000 miles by an old lady who never went over 35 miles per hour. What if you don't know if it is a false statement or not? What can Nick do? First of all, again, separate people from the problem. Unless you have a good reason to trust someone, just don't. Just as any seller will check your credit, even if you have money in the bank, 
you have the right to verify the seller's statements. Do your own research to avoid being cheated. There is also the case where the other side makes you think that they have full authority to compromise just as you have. In other words, you find out that Mr. Solomon doesn't really have the power to make decisions. He still needs a superior approval. And this is a bad situation to fall into because they have more flexibility to change the game. So, before you start any negotiation, it is perfectly normal to inquire how much authority he has over that particular negotiation. From then, you may wish to talk to someone with real authority, like Mr. Kleban, for example, who happens to be Mr. Solomon's boss. Just in case they announce unexpectedly that they are treating what you thought was an agreement as a basis for further negotiation, then insist in reciprocity. In order to win the negotiation over you, the other party may try to make you feel uncomfortable using tactics that we will refer to as psychological warfare. They will try to create stressful situations, like trying to manipulate where the meeting is going to happen, for example. They will try to have it in their territory, for example, so then they feel in control. What to do then? Fight? No, actually, accept it. They will be more open to your suggestions, and if necessary, it is even easier for you to walk out. Just be aware of what allowing them to choose really means. What are the effects? If you find the physical surrounding prejudicial, do not hesitate to say so. Identify the problem and negotiate better physical circumstances. People will also try to use personal attacks. Using both verbal and nonverbal communication to make you feel uncomfortable. And it goes from implying that you are ignorant to even comment on your clothes. So what to do? What we said early, raise the issue explicitly. Now, the third category, positional pressure tactics. These are used to structure the situation so that only one side can make concessions. Some of them refuse to negotiate. What to do? First, recognize the tactic as a possible negotiation ploy. Second, do not attack them for refusing to negotiate, but rather find out their interest in not negotiating and suggest some options, such as negotiating through third parties, for example. See, we use these tips, recognize, raise the issue explicitly, find options for mutual gain, and use principles. They may also use the famous take it or leave it tactic. If it ever gets to that point where the other party says that, then ignore it and just keep talking as if you didn't hear it or change the subject, perhaps introducing other solutions. So as a conclusion, please remember this. Whatever you do, be prepared to fight tricky tactics. You can be just as firm as they can even firmer. It is easier to defend principle than an illegitimate tactic. Don't be a victim.